Let's practice solving for x in these diagrams. So with number one, you should always start off with the angle that you've been given, which is the 20. Then you look at what you have. So we've got the x and we've got the 10. So the x is the opposite. Okay, so we definitely have the opposite. And the 10 is the hypotenuse. So can you remember which ratio either sin, cos, or tan uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, remember, we can use Sokotoa, or the other one is Oho, another hour of algebra, but I prefer Sokotoa. And so we can see that sin uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. So what we then do is we say that the sin of 20 is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite. Now, if you did it like that, that is incorrect. The reason is, is that it says Sokotoa. So it starts with the O. So instead, sin 20 is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's very important. All right, so sin 20 is going to be equal to the opposite. So the opposite, so let me just write here sin 20, is the opposite, which is x, and the hypotenuse, well, that's 10. And if you watched the previous video, and if you haven't, I would suggest you do so, to get x by itself, we had to multiply both sides by 10, which causes this 10 to end up going to the top. And so you end up with 10 sin 20, equals 2x. You then pop all of that in on the calculator. So you type in 10 sin 20 on your calculator. And to two decimal places, that's going to give us x equals to 3,42. Moving on to number two. First step is always start off or pick an angle to start off with. You never want to start off with the 90 degree. Then look at what you have. So the x, well, that's going to be the opposite. The reason I say always start off with an angle first is because if you had to start off with this angle here, which you could if you wanted to, because we know that this is a triangle, so all angles add up to 180. And so if you had to do the maths, you'd see that this angle should equal to 50. But then if you chose that as your starting point, then the x wouldn't be called the opposite anymore. The x would be called the adjacent. And, that's, and, and, and you could still do it that way. There's no problem with that. But the point is, is that it depends on which angle you start off with. So if you start off with this 40, then the x is the opposite. But if you start off with the 50 instead, then the x isn't the opposite anymore, it's the adjacent. However, you will get the same answer at the end, but you'll end up using a different ratio. So instead of using sin, you might use cos, or instead of using cos, you might use tan. So let's ignore the 50, and let's start off with the 40. So we said that x, if we're using the 40, well, x is going to be the opposite. So we have the opposite, and we also have the... we have this 5. Now, what is that 5 relative to the 40? Well, that's the adjacent. So we have the adjacent and the opposite. Now, which of these uses adjacent and opposite? Well, that's going to be tan. Okay, so then what we do is we say that the tan of the angle 40 is equal to the opposite comes first. And so the opposite of that is x over the adjacent, well, that is 5. And then to get x by itself, you would have to put this 5 up here. And so you'd end up with x equals to 5 tan 40. And so you can type all that in on the calculator. And what that's going to give you is... 4,2 if you round it up.